Holly, hello. Sorry, I thought I would do a different intro today, you know, popping up instead of coming through the curtain. I don't know, you let me know down below if you enjoy it. But anyway, I'm Refashionista Sherry, and I am here to show you just how quick and easy it is to upcycle and refashion your wardrobe and those items you have lurking around your house that you just not feeling anymore and transform them into things you want to use and wear every single day. And how do I know it's quick and easy? Well, because I taught myself how to do it when I was 38. So I know if I can learn and teach myself, then I'm pretty sure I can teach you how to do it too. And you don't need any special tools or skills or equipment or anything like that. You just need a little bit of a refashionista know-how, which of course you can also find in my awesome eBooks and my fabulous e-course, which is 50% off when you use the code REFASHION50. And that makes it super duper cheap. So head on over there, enjoy it. But let's get started on what we're doing today. So I've had these five items in my mending stash for a little while, some longer than others. So I think it's time that today we're gonna mend them. We're gonna do all of these all together. And they're all relatively quick and easy mends that you yourself can do. And I know for most of these, everybody has something in their wardrobe that is similar, that needs the same mend. So it's going to be hopefully helpful for everyone because it's five items. That's five men. So we got some jeans that we're going to shorten and take the waist in. And I have yet another idea for taking in the waist. We got a vintage dress that definitely needs something done with the sleeves. And actually, I recently thrifted this. And um, when I put it on, once I got it home, I noticed something so that needs fixing. And these two items here, this is missing some important fasteners. And this one is just that little bit too tight in my chest that the buttons pop open. So we're going to see how we can fix these using 95% hand stitching. And uh, let's get mending. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with the extreme easy one here because I'm just gonna remove some stitches. I mean, really all of these are super duper easy and you can do them, trust me, it's so simple. All right, so you may remember this sweater from my recent end of season $3 thrift shop sweater haul video. If you missed it, it'll be linked down below for you. But this fits me fine, like no issue at all. But when I put it on to share it and show the outfit, how I styled it, I was feeling some really chunky bulk on my sides. And so when I took it off, I noticed that someone had actually taken in the sides of this. Now, it does still fit me. I can't stress this enough. It's just uncomfortable with these. And, you know, who doesn't like a wider more comfy, cozy sweater. I mean, I really do. So you can see here where they basically just took some yarn and stitched with it all the way up the sides plus a little bit down the sleeve. So all I'm going to do is remove this and then I will have miraculously upsized this sweater to, you know, be a little bit more wide and comfy and like not difficult at all. Just taking this bit of time to remove what someone had art, had stitched here is, it's simple. It's nothing. So I'm going to go finish this off and um, yeah, then we'll move to the next one. You see, like too easy. This absolutely gorgeous late 70s, early 80s vintage secretary style dress was one that I scored in a vintage mystery box from my fave Poshmark seller, Davella Stylish. And I've shared a couple unboxings from her because they're just, they're so phenomenally amazing. You have to check them out. They'll be linked down below for you. But this, although gorgeous and in absolutely mint condition, of course, the elastics here at the end of the cuffs are, it's gone. I mean, it's, you know, 
decades old. So of course the elastic is going to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the elastic and then decide if I want to put in more elastic or if I simply want to maybe give it a nice press and have sleeves that don't have an elastic on the bottom. And all I need to do that, this is another super simple fix here guys, is my trusty seam ripper. And I can feel already that Thankfully, luckily, because this is so vintage, the elastic isn't actually stitched here. Like, you know, on a lot of modern garments, when they have an elastic waist or whatever, it is actually serge stitched right to the fabric and it takes forever to remove it. But in this case, I think I can pretty much just open up the seam and pull it out. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I just opened up the cuff seam just a little bit here, and you can see I can actually pull that, which is wonderful. So I'm gonna snip the elastic and just pull it out. Ta -da! Okay, so I have both of the elastics out now, and I still don't know if I wanna leave it as it is and just have like a wide, Kind of cuff or let's just see I'm just gonna slip it over my arm and I don't know I don't really like it hanging so much and if I put elastic back in then I can have it a little bit tighter here and make it into a little puff sleeve if I want to so let's just replace the elastic okay I have my adorable little elastic storage box here and Look at that, I have so much elastic in here. <laughs> um, I don't really use elastic a lot, but you know, it's always good to have on hand. Anyway, I think we're just gonna go with this pink because it's the same size as the original elastic. And look at that, it's gonna fit in there perfectly. So the very first thing I'm going to do is of course, take my handy dandy safety pin and just pop it through the end of the elastic. Again, you see how easy all of this is? It's just so simple. And like, I think I got this pink elastic from the dollar store. So again, it does not have to be expensive at all. You don't have to have an, extens an extensive <laughs> stash of your own to simply mend stuff. Okay, so there's my little opening. I'm just gonna slide my safety pin in there and then work it all the way around. So once I have the pinned end of my elastic all the way through the elastic tunnel and back out the other end, I just pin it to the actual fabric. And I do that because I know a lot of people like to pre-measure their elastic and everything. I like this method. This is what works best for me, so this is how I do it. And I just put the garment back on. So this is going to hit about there, just below my elbow, and then I can tighten it up to the tightness that I want it to be, um, instead of, you know, measuring and then maybe it's wrong and it's all done and then it's too tight or it's too loose and I got to go back in again. I just find this works the best for me. So I think that is about right. So I'm just going to mark that with my thumbnail and then chop it to size. Okay, so now that my elastic is now the perfect size, it's pinned together and I'm just gonna hand stitch it so it doesn't come apart. Okay, my elastic is all stitched together now and you see, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. It just has to be sturdy. I mean, it's gonna be hidden inside the cuff, right? So really, who cares? Um, anyway, so I'm <laughs> just gonna tuck that over and now I can go and hand stitch this little area that I had to open closed. Okay, here's my sewing box and I just am curious if anyone else does this or if it's just my weird refashionista brain in action once again. So see here my little stuffy that holds all of my needles. Well, I actually save my threaded needles with the little bits of thread that I have left when I'm done a project. And I do that because you just never know, you know, if 
I might need this blue thread. And you know what? I do need this blue thread right now. It matches almost perfectly and I don't need a lot of it. And I really hate threading needles. So <laughs> this is just a way that I, I guess I don't waste my thread and I don't have to thread needles if it's just for a little project. So I just wanna know, does anyone else do this? By the way, if you are unsure about how to get started hand sewing or sewing on buttons or anything like that, then go ahead and download my Sewing Basics ebook because everything's in there and it's, you know, super duper cheap. So um, you can see how I'm doing this. I'm just stretching the elastic so I have a nice smooth surface to stitch on. And again, this does not have to be perfect whatsoever because it's going to get all gathered up and hidden once I move the fabric around to the cover all the elastic area and even it all up. So you see what I mean here? It's all nicely gathered up everywhere and you can't even tell that I replaced the elastic or where I stitched it. So now I'm just going to pop my arm in just to make sure everything is perfect and oh, it is look it's gonna puff nicely that is wonderful so now I can go repeat this whole quick and easy process with the other sleeve this is an absolutely gorgeous vintage skirt and I absolutely love the details here going all the way around and I'm guessing you can put a belt through here. I think I definitely will. The only thing wrong with this is it's missing a button. That's it. That is the only thing that needs to be done to this. But before we do that, I just want to show you something that I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit I found out about just a few years ago. And you see here, it looks like there's pockets, but there's I can't get my hand in. But I can clearly feel that there is some kind of pocket there. So if you run into this in your own thrifting adventures, you know, all you have to do, look, I can get my finger just in the top there. And you see here, it's just a very easy to remove basting stitch. And companies and brands do this, especially with higher quality items. And you may see this a lot in vintage items. And um, yeah, my Googling led me to believe that they do this to simply stop the pockets from like dragging the garment down if it's hung up and they don't want them to get misshapen and also of course they don't want people putting things in the pockets in the store but um look at that you see you just take out this really simple basting stitch and la la there's my pocket you see i knew i felt a pocket in there and one on this side too. So how cool is that? So yeah, all I got to do is find a button and replace this missing button. That's it. So there's my collection of black buttons. And anytime I refashion, if I'm removing buttons, I hold on to them. And I have a whole system, which I'll show you in a minute. But I think I just need a small button and that one looks pretty cool. So let's see if it fits in here and oh, it absolutely does. So I'm just gonna go stitch this on and that's it for this mend. I mean, it's super, super simple to replace a button. And as I said, if you don't know how, get my Sewing Basics ebook. And the button is on and of course, fully functional and awesome. So you see another very, very quick and easy mend. And you know what, someone else may have left this behind at the thrift shop or swap or just tossed it simply because it was missing a button which is crazy because you see how easy it is to just replace a button speaking of buttons so I absolutely adore this jumpsuit. It is so fabulous and festive and this kind of shimmering green. It's just, I love it. I love it so much. And it fits me perfectly, but because I have a wee bit of a generous chest going on, the buttons tend to pop. Oh, look, I didn't, I barely pulled it and popped out. And the reason behind that is because these buttons are actually too small for the buttonholes. So it kind of defeats the purpose of having buttons if they're just going to pop out at the smallest bit of pulling like that. Again, it popped out. So what I'm going to do is replace one, two, three, four, five buttons. And how simple is that? So let's go check out my button stash because I think it's pretty cool. And there's my button stash. So I'm just going to grab it down so we can have a closer look. 
So I've pretty much been collecting these buttons since I started refashioning, which is why I have such an impressive collection now. And this little crate I actually got from a garage sale a few years ago for, I think it was a dime, so 10 cents. And it just fits everything and it has a nice little handle on the top. These are olive or pickle jars or something just cleaned out and they hold all of my buttons and you can see everything is categorized by color here and I just think it is a great way to store your buttons. <laughs> So I think I want to stick with black buttons on this jumpsuit, so I've busted out my black button jar again, and I'm just going to dump them all out. Okay, because I need to find five buttons that all match and are going to be bigger than this, but still small enough to comfortably fit through the holes. And I was just thinking, yay, but there's only four of those, so no. Um, I'm gonna go and do this and uh, come back when I found my buttons. All right, this is genuinely one of the hardest parts about being a refashionista because I literally only have one set of five buttons in my stash because I'm a refashionista. So I only use upcycled and recycled materials or things I have on hand, things I can get at the thrift shop, or things that people give me and send me. And so here are the five buttons. I mean, they're not terrible, but you know, they're not grand. Um, it would be nice to have something a little bit fancier looking. So then I got the idea that, okay, I found these two and these are beautiful. Look at that. They're gorgeous. And they're almost the similar shimmery to that. So if I was thinking, okay, if I put two of those and then the rest of those, no, that doesn't look good. Or what about these plain black ones? Still no, not looking good. So those are out. These, I got excited when I saw them because they are all from the same button set, but these big ones just are too big to go in there and I don't want to make new buttonholes that are bigger, especially because I have three big and two small. So those are out. These ones as well, exact same problem. So then I thought, okay, let's put one plain black there and then the rest, these ones, because, you know, it's just all plain then. And then I can add a fancy belt or whatever, and it's not going to be a big deal. And I think because these ones are just that little bit bigger than these ones, they're going to work out a lot better because I can get them through and they're going to hold a lot better, I think. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go stitch all of these on and then we'll hopefully see that it's going to look awesome. <laughs> Ta-da! All of my buttons are lovely and stitched on very securely. And look at this. Do you remember before when I did this, the buttons just popped open? Well, they don't anymore. And that is because these buttons are much bigger and they are completely covering the buttonholes. So they're not going to pop open anymore. And it's a very, very quick and easy fix if you have the same problem as I did. I recently thrifted these jeans for only $5.99 and I got them because, first of all, I thought they might actually fit me. And second of all, they are Yoga Jeans, which is a sustainable, ethical Canadian company. And so it's fantastic that I was able to find them at the thrift shop and there's nothing wrong with them. They're absolutely perfect. But they are quite long for me. And when I did finally try them on when I got home, they are about an inch too big for me in the waist. So let's go ahead and fix that. So let's sort out the length first. And to do that, I just grabbed a pair of jeans that have the perfect length that I love. And these are actually ethical, sustainable, slow jeans that I bought for myself for my birthday a couple of years ago. And I love them so much. Anyway, so I've lined everything up. And if we uh, check here, yeah, you see? That's quite a bit that I have to get rid of there. So I'm simply going to chop that, give myself some seam allowance, and then hem them up. Very, very simple.
So now that my jeans are all nicely shortened and hemmed, it is time to see how I'm going to take in the waist. All right, so I made an executive refashionista decision about these jeans. And because they are actually less than an inch too big for me in the waist, I decided just to leave them as is. And if you've ever had a period or ever been bloated for any reason whatsoever, you understand completely why I'm leaving them as is. And you know what? I'm just going to go old school and put a belt on because I have loads of belts in my collection and that's the quickest and easiest way to make your pants fit better, right? Just throw a belt on. <laughs> Once again, I think I have proven that you don't need any special tools or skills or anything like that to create clothes that fit you perfectly and upcycle just about anything to uh, create your own unique style. You know, there's no big tricks behind anything that I do. I just do. And if I can do it, anybody can, <laughs> truly. Sincerely, I I can't say it enough, you know, I really do believe that because I didn't start doing this till I was in my late 30s. So truly, you guys, anyone who says, I can't sew, I can't this, I can't that, you don't have to do any of that. I have tons of fantastic no-sew tutorials as well as loads of stuff for around the house. That's not really sewing, is it? You gotta, you can pick up a paintbrush or a can of spray paint. You can get, grab a screwdriver and fix something. None of this is difficult. Once again, for the billion and 50th time, if I can do it, you can do it, right? And you have the encouragement of me and everybody else who is trying their best. And you know what? That feeling that you get when you actually fix something or you make something, you upcycle something, you refashion something, and then you're out and about and someone says, oh my god, I love your top. Where did you buy it? I didn't buy it. This I made from a one dollar thrifted blanket. And you know what? Only hand sewing and you can do it too. And the tutorial, of course, will be linked down below for you. As always, you can use the free tutorials over on my blog, on my channel. Like, I have over 1,600 free tutorials and thrifty style inspiration posts over on my blog. I've been doing this since about 2011. So, and it's free. You guys, it's free. So why not take advantage of the freeness? And if you want to support me though, please do subscribe, throw me a like, absolutely comment and share because we got to let that algorithm know that what we are doing here is changing lives. It is not rocket science to figure out that you don't need to spend tons of money or any money at all to look good, feel great, and create every single thing that you would love to have in your dream wardrobe or like today's video proved. Just, you know, mend some things that maybe don't fit you anymore. Changing buttons? How easy was that? Putting a belt on? I mean, come on. Do you get any easier? I don't think you do. <laughs> so I'm going to stop ranting now because it is time once again for another Cool Things in My House. For this Cool Things in My House, we're going into my room again. But first, I just wanted to show you this wonderfully huge and amazing fabric artwork that I created. And of course, the tutorial will be down below for you for this. But let's go in my room. Oh. You know, I made this like years and years and years ago, so a uh, tutorial, I guess, linked below once again. <laughs> Let's go in my room. There's some lovely vintage thrifted art there, but this is what we are here for. And it's not the clothes on my lovely upcycled wardrobe, but it is the wardrobe dress hanger thingy itself. And this vintage ladder I actually made into three awesome things. And the first one is this fantastic wardrobe where I hang all of my vintage dresses and my belts and everything. Take that off. Oh, this as well. Um, 
I'll put the tutorial for my little hanger hanger thingies here and <laughs> I just make everything and you see the rungs of the ladder here I can hang some of my vast belt collection on but so this is one part of the ladder clearly with the rungs and then I cut it all up and put it back together so you can see under there there is the ladder rungs. Here I hung a very, very sturdy piece of bamboo through some very, very sturdy chain from some of these um, ladder rungs. And it's fantastic. And clearly it can take a lot of weight because that's a lot of dresses. Then up here, this, I can't even remember where I got this wood from, probably bed slats. So I just screwed it all together and made a shelf. And that's where in the cold weather, all of my sweaters and stuff live, except here, that's my vintage slips. Those are some of my favorite t-shirts in there. And if we come <laughs> to the other end, there's more belts. And these belts are hanging on, there was these metal pieces sticking out of the ladder where you hooked on like the secondary part of the ladder, if that makes sense. And now they hold my belts, more of my belts. And then here, oh look, more belts. And on these rungs is like my leg warmers and stuff. I don't really know if you can see that well, but it's a lot of stuff. Okay, second thing I made from the ladder. Oh, first, look at that absolutely fabulous earring and pin holder. Again, I'll link the tutorial below for you. But here, la la, my adorable ladder bookshelf. And this was just another piece from that same vintage ladder. And yeah, so I painted it and you can see it's just held on. Let me move my books here with belts. That's it. And of course, I have very sturdy screws and anchors in the wall there, but each level has a longer piece of belt. So it's kind of leaning out from the wall. And then when I put the books on the rungs, they just lean back into the wall and it's a wonderful, free, fabulous little bookshelf. But now we got to go downstairs so I can show you what I did with the last remaining piece of that ladder. Hello, Mr. Jack. How are you doing? All right, let's go into the kitchen to see oh, the last piece of that ladder. And um, when we first moved into this property, it, the storage was just non-existent. So this is what I came up with for our pots and pans. And I think it's a pretty clever pot rack. And again, held on the wall with some vintage leather belt and of course, incredibly strong <laughs> screw anchors. And the pots are just um, hung up with these S hooks from the dollar store. And once again, I shall link the tutorial down below for you for that. But there it is, my wonderful creations from a vintage letter that I found by the side of the road. Do let me know down below what you think. <laughs> and as always, I hope you enjoyed that little peek into the cool things in my house that I have upcycled and recreated. And just, again, it's so easy. And you can learn how to do everything that I do in my Refashioning 101 e-course, my e-books, or, you know, everything everything else that's available on my blog and my channel. It's, it's all there, right? It's all there. And if you would love to support me a little bit more, as I said, feel free to enroll in my courses, download my eBooks and support me over on Patreon, Patreon. Again, I don't know how to say it. If you know how to say it, let me know down below. But until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya. On the zigzag. And thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of my video because once again, that is telling that pesky algorithm that this content is worth watching to the end and it's gonna hopefully push me out to more viewers. This is Confessions of a Refashionista.